So today I'm going to show you how I painted a simple and colorful toucan. I painted this bird for a weekly watercolor challenge in my watercolor group and I was amazed how fun and challenging it could be to paint birds. Toucan bird has a very colorful beak as you may know. I used shades of orange and red for this part while doing it mostly wet on wet. In my paintings, I am very fond of this technique as it allows the color to flow smoothly on the parts I wanted the paint pigments to be, avoiding the dry parts of the paper. But also, you have to be careful and always be subtle in adding colors at first. So, to avoid colors bleeding into each other, I left some parts to dry first before I paint the part next to it. Just like what I did here, I moved on to other parts of the bird while waiting for this area to dry. Now the neck area has some yellow feathers on it and a tinge of yellow green around the eyes. I try to be subtle in my strokes as well using back and forth motion like the feather. I used only round brushes for this painting but you can actually use any brush you are comfortable with using while doing this technique. Then while the yellow paint is still wet, I added a green tinge around the eye for it to mix well with the yellow. In this instance, I wanted the green and yellow to bleed into each other so I added the other color while it's still wet. Then I went back to the beak as it had dried already and added more light colors on the other areas of it like blue and green. I carefully added them lightly and noticed that there is a bit of a highlight on top of the beak so I tried to lift some pigments off it with a wet brush. You could also use a dry paper towel after wetting the area to really lift the colors off. I made sure that most of the area has dried before adding more pigments to the first layer. I added another layer of color to make it more vibrant here. Feel free to add as much layers as you want by letting the area dry first before you add another layer if you want more vibrant colors. As for me, I wanted this painting to be just light and simple. So I think I'm done in this area for now. I might be back when it gets dried and see that I need to add another wash and will also be adding a little bit of details later on though. I used black here for the bottom of the beak and added shadows below it. Finally, I added another wash to the beak as I thought it needed more saturation. Now going back to the eye area, I added more definition around it by adding more green. Then I painted some feather details with a small round brush using the green pigment. Using the same brush, I then put shadows around it and left some highlights of the eye. I went back to the beak now that it's dried and added final details on it. As for the shadows of the yellow feather, I just added a tiny bit of purple on the yellow paint and very subtly applied it on the darker yellow area. Then a bit of orange at the bottom. In here, I started with some quinacridone red as a base carefully spreading it all over and stroking back and forth next to the yellow feather. Then I mixed thalo blue to the red and some Jane's grey depending on how dark I wanted it to be. I made this mixture as my second layer. With watercolor, pigments tend to fade when dried so Adding another layer as much as needed after the paper is dry is good. It's also nice to leave out some areas for the highlights. I might have to add another layer on this area so I let it dry while I moved on to the body or the wings. I did an initial wash with Jane's Grey on the body, then I did another layer of the same color. But sometimes I don't mind mixing it with other color just so it will blend and appear connected to other parts of the image. And also not to appear monochromatic. So as you can see, my mixing palette is really very messy but it works for me. 
In here, I added some initial details on the feathers of the wing. I made the areas around each feather darker just to make it pop. In the reference photo, the darkest area is at the bottom, so I painted mostly black with the direction of each feather. I just made some lines here for the details on the wings. I added darker shadows around the feather as it dried up. I left the tip of the wings for a little highlighted part. Added darker colors at the bottom with an upward stroke according to the direction of the feathers. Then again I used black for the tail, letting it dry and will add more pigments later on as needed. I left off some white and orange parts for the tail. I finalized the details on the tail as it tend to fade as the paper dried up. I just took a final look at the reference photo here and darkened or added more details where needed. Then I painted the feet with a muted blue color. So that's about it for the bird tutorial. For the branch, I will leave that to your creative imagination and decide on what to use. In here, I just painted a simple branch with tiny leaves around it. This was my first time to do any sort of bird painting and I didn't really have much expectations from myself on this but I'm happy with the result anyway. So, in conclusion, what's important in making any sort of art is the thought that you enjoyed what you're doing and to never give up. It's not always the final result that matters but the fact that you're able to express yourself in a creative way is what's important. As a beginner, I was really just having a lot of fun during the painting process and not minding where it would take me. Although it's good to have a goal in mind but that's not all to it. One thing is for sure, this will not be my last bird painting, a lot more will be coming. I'd like to know your experiences while doing a certain style of art or painting for the first time. You can leave a comment down below and share some tips if you like. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really means a lot to me and gets me motivated to do better in my artistic journey. I'll see you next week for a new video.